the hell's up everyone? I hope you're all doing well. It's a really awesome day today. An uh, awesome day to cringe. Awesome day to just look at some lyrics and freaking cringe at them. A lot of you left some lovely comments on uh, the part two of the cringy lyric tier list. Yeah, part two. That's that's right. There's there's not only one, there's two. And now there's about to be a third one. Isn't that crazy? Aren't we crazy? Why don't we rank some more goddamn cringy ass lyrics? I let you feel like you the shit, but boy, you can't out fart me. If there's one thing about J. Cole, if there's one thing about this fella named J. Cole, is that no one can out fart him. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Just like the human body, I produce my own shit. Did J. Cole also say that? No. I will say, J. J. Cole is a character. He's, he's full of, he's full of, he's full of character. Yep. Royal Flush? I wouldn't say they're cringe. I will say there's a lot of poop and shit bars in, in the music industry, especially rap. But hey, I don't got a problem with it. I think this is great. I think on the scale of cringe, this is this made me smile more than cringe. Especially just like the human body, I produce my own shit. Bars. I mean, I'd give them A tier. Because it's like, I didn't cringe, I cracked a smile. If I had to pick the cringiest J. Cole lyric, to my knowledge, listen, I'm not a J. Cole connoisseur. I think this one takes the cake. Some make millions, other make memes. Crazy for that one, J. Cole. From none other than Ariana Grande, we've got, we've got that hood love. We've got that good love, we've got that hot love, we've got that I don't give a what, I don't give a what, love. Ariana Grande has that hood love? No way. Ariana Grande does? Child star? Child Victoria star? I don't know. A little weird that that multi-million pop sensation Ariana Grande has that hood love. Like, I, I, I wouldn't really expect that from her. If I had to pick, like, my cringiest Ariana Grande song, honestly, I, I'm i gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I don't know how. Un unpopular opinion. Unpopular opinion incoming. Probably seven rings, I'd say. Listen, I'm no, I'm no Ariana Grande star as well, but... <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I'd be like, put it in the bag, yeah. When you see them racks, they're stacked up to my ass, yeah. That's crazy. She's crazy for that one. This one, I've got, I've got to give it an F tier. Easy F. Easy F tier for that one. Sorry, Ariana. Sorry, Stans. What? I'm a venereal disease, like a menstrual bleed? A menstrual bleed isn't, isn't a venereal disease. What does that mean? I don't think he gets it. I don't think he understands how, like, the woman body works. This is, like, one of the first things he says. So, okay, here's the thing. Maybe I misunderstood because it may sound like Lil Wayne believes female menstruation is a venereal disease, but that's probably not what's going on. Probably. He loosely connects the two to transition into a description of his writing process. Additionally, Wayne's career keeps coming back for more, just like a monthly period or a venereal disease that you can't get rid of. Oh, okay. So basically what Lil Wayne is saying is that if there were a Venn diagram of like venereal disease and menstrual bleed, like they're not, they don't share that many things except what they do share is that they come back to get you sometimes. Like they come back to bite you sometimes. Like, you know, once a month maybe, I guess, depending on the venereal disease you goddamn have. Would I say it's cringe? Yeah, I'd say it's a little bit. It's a little, it's a little tickle, it's a little tickle. Well, the goddamn la 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 tickle cringe. I give this one a B. B for bleed. B for menstrual bleed. Yeah. <laughs> when One Direction said her light is as loud as as many ambulances is. <laughs> what? Hold on. Like, what in the predictive text is this? What does that mean? I'm gonna say, listen. I like I. I wasn't much of a directioner either. I know, embarrassing. Her light is as loud as as many ambulances as it takes to save a savior. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Is that how it goes? I've never listened to this song, if I'm honest. This is One Direction, where their fans are just like, absolutely, like, they love One Direction. And no one could, di no one could dissect this. No one could annotate this on genius. Not a single genius could annotate a genius. It's kind of funny, it's kind of goofy. I'm not cringing, I'm just kind of laughing, but I'm not laughing enough where it's, like, funny. Like, it's not really that funny, it's just goofy. C tier, whatever. On to the next one. I can flow like pee coming out, you know what or some dookie diarrhea coming out your butt. I'm nasty, disgusting, oh my peewee. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, honestly, I think this part is ridiculous. I think this part's even cringier. I don't, the don't. Now watch me ding it. Oh my darling, oh my darling. Ah, shut up. He's just telling it like it is Shaq. I've never really done a deep dive into Shaq's music. Oh, here we go. Here we go, this is the stuff. I can flow like pee coming out, you know what, or some dookie diarrhea coming out your butt. 
I'm nasty, disgusting. Oh my poof wee. And then he just pivots. You know, it's like he's done a lot. He's done enough of the pee and poop, and now he's just going to some beautiful nature imagery. He floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. Isn't that the dream? I give this one S tier. This is S tier. Pee poo, whatever. I know. Oh, another song about poopy. Another song about pee pee. Another song about cummy balls. I don't want to hear it. This one's awesome, and it's Shaquille O'Neal. Who would have thought? To find someone who cares is getting harder to find. <laughs> Driving without a seatbelt because he will only die for his bitch. Yeah, I mean, role model's a nice guy. This one's a D tier, solid D. I want to be your vacuum cleaner breathing in your dust. Who said that? Arctic monkeys? They said that in this song? This is the first thing they say? Wait, hold on. Am I stupid? That's so ridiculous. What does genius have to say about this? Some profound explanation from genius here. Beginning with these lines and continuing throughout the song, Alex pleads to be used like an object by his lover. A vacuum cleaner picks up all the leftovers, the mess, the unwanted, and the forgotten. For the artist to assume this role, he is taking on the responsibility to deal with what most would not, and in a way taking all the bad that comes with the good. A great expression of the potential devotion he is trying to portray, indicating both a desire to be close to his lover and a desire to give up on or sacrifice things such as breathing clean air. The lines reveal an almost masochistic love. And then we have a beautifully profound and unprecedented gift of a cat on a Roomba. Now, when you put it that way, it's like, okay, like I, I, am I still cringing? Like if anything, I think the, I think the genius annotation kind of skewed my opinion because I'm cringing a little bit more now. He would give up the desire to breathe clean air. He would breathe in dust and dirt for this lady. That's pretty powerful. Is it cringe? Yeah, I, that's a solid C. Solid C for Arctic Monkey. My biggest distraction is that I get distracted. Listen, well, well, we've been over this, guys. There's something to be said about lyrics that just tell it like it is, you know? Who cares about all the nuance nowadays? Who gives a goddamn shit? Who gives a yeah. f***ing hawk sucking ass Hi. shit about all the nuance? How about we just strip it down? How about we just make it simple? How about we just make it so relatable that even I can relate? I mean, if I had to rank my distractions on like an iceberg, on like a, on like a food chain, I think the top of my distraction food chain would simply be that I'm getting distracted. Sue me. But I, I think that's, I think that's the ticket. I think that's really, everyone can relate to that, right? Like name a bigger distraction than getting distracted. Honestly, I would put this, this is a solid B tier for me. Maybe even an A tier, A for ASAP, because it's like, it's not cringy. It's just kind of funny, goofy. But in a way that makes it so relatable that even my, my grandmother could relate to that. Someone said you should do a tier list with just Katy Perry and Avril Lavigne lyrics. Is Katy Perry, like, widely known to be cringe or something? I mean, like, I know she's a little cringe, you know, like, Dark Forest music video is, like, definitely cringe. But does she have a lot of cringe lyrics? Oh, that's right, I forgot she made the song Peacock. I want to sing your peacock. What are you talking about? Let's read the lyrics to that. Who do you think, who do you think it came up with it? Was it Esther? Was it Tua? Was it Michael? Who did it? Skip the talk. Heard it all. It's time to walk the walk. Talk to him, Katie. Who, yes, who cares about the talk? Let's just walk the walk. I think it's really funny, I will say, like, I don't know. When there's a concept for a song, and then, like, the sort of, this song is like, I want to see your peacock. And then the songwriters are probably like, oh, man, we got to include a lot of animal imagery in this song because it's a song about seeing the peacock. So we got to make a lot of animal references to sort of create this, this motif of animal imagery in this song because it'll be just so profound and unprecedented to talk about don't be a chicken and I need some goose to get loose. And the peacock, of course, the goddamn peacock. It's the whole the, 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 the thesis of the song, you know? So it's really profound and it's deep and it's like it adds layers to this peacock arc for Katie, you know? Because it's like there's a peacock, there's a chicken, and there's a goose. What's next? A penguin? What's next? You want to see my ostrich? What's next? You want to see my three-legged parrot? What, what's next? You want to see? You want to see my eight-legged Willie from the hit show Flapjack? <laughs> That's my joke. Who cares? No one even asked for this one. I'm gonna give this one an F tier. Just the whole song. Just throw the whole song away. Throw the whole song an F tier. Andrew says I've always hated the line and only one by Yellow Card. I just want to tell you, so you know. But that's why you t tell anyone anything though fair i mean like personally at first glance when i read this i was like you know this isn't the worst this isn't this isn't the cringiest lyric i've ever heard this could have been a whole lot worse it could have been worse but you know andrew raises a fair point it's like why else would you tell someone something 
if you didn't want them to know it. Like, isn't that the number one reason? It's like, this is like similar to, you know, my biggest distraction is getting distracted. It's like stating the obvious, but in a song setting so that it sounds more profound and, and deep. You know, it sounds like there's a lot of layers here in the simplicity of it all, when in reality, it's just like a really obvious statement. And who knows, if someone would have said this to me in conversation, maybe I'd be like, yeah, no <laughs> goddamn, Dang. no goddamn shit. But in a song, you're gonna serenade me with, I just wanna tell you so you know. Maybe, maybe I think differently. Maybe I'd go, wow, you know, I, I would have never thought of it like that, truly. I think this one's a solid C, solid C tier. Yeah, that's right. Sue me, Andrew, I gave your suggestion a C tier. Whatever. <laughs> this is not real. This is not real. You're making this up, Logjam. There's no way 21 Pilot said, lost my wife, lost my job, my kids, my homie just sued me. First of all, there's no way that's, that they said that. Second of all, there's no way that happened. Oh my god. What? Why did I like them so much in high school? Maybe within the context of the song, it seems like the song is like, ah, it's a good day. But all this shit's going on, but like, it's a good day, right? You know, like that's kind of what it sounds like the song seems like the song. The song seems like it sounds like that, you know? Lost my job, my wife and child. Homie just sued me. Homie just sued me. Homie? Homie just sued me. Yeah, I'd give this song, I mean, it's like in the context of the song. Yeah, great, whatever, who cares? I'll give it a D tier. I make the rules. I don't need to give you a reason. I don't need to explain myself. <gasps> the waiter with my Coke doesn't care about my health like you do, baby. Okay, putting the Jacob Sartorius line, it's kind of cheating. It's like, yeah, obviously he's going to say something cringy. This one's definitely F tier. But I wonder what he's up to nowadays. What's he up to? Flume follows him? Oh, okay. So this is what he's up to. King shit. Awesome. Well, this was profound, guys. I hope you liked Cringy Lyric part, Tier List Part 3. I got to a bunch of them. I got I got to a bunch of them. There were some good ones in here. There were sure some good ones. Let me know if you want a Part 4. All right. Love you guys. If you like this video, it would mean a lot to me to, if you gave this channel a sub. You don't have to, except it's literally free and you have no reason not to sub if you're not already subscribed to them, whatever. And if you like this video, it would really help if you gave it a like like a literal like and a comment. What was your favorite cringy lyric? What's your favorite one?